This is episode 145. Are INFP personality traits good for business? You know, I think they have a lot of good qualities that no other types have. And I think I have been able to be such a relatively successful marketing consultant and business owner because of the INFP traits I use every single day. In this episode, I will tell you what has helped me become successful and how you can learn to own your own personality and how you can become successful online in a space that's really dominated by non-INFPs. So with that said, let's get started. Welcome to the Calm Marketer Podcast. My name is Kenneth Fong, a digital marketer on a mission to help businesses thrive. I'll bring you on my marketing journey where you'll get to learn from my experiences as an INFP navigating an extroverted world and get actionable marketing tips for your business. Thanks for spending some time with me today. Now let's begin. Being an INFP in business can be very, very challenging. I've struggled uh, a lot over my marketing career, trying to navigate this whole world, this whole professional world, and find my place in it. And I think as I grow older, I've learned to, to use my personality trait uh, for for the better, and and use it for good, and use it for for growing myself and my business, and and just being happy um, as as I you know as I navigate life, and I think you know with INFPs they are so different than other personality traits. I'm not sure if you what your situation is, but you know if you are in marketing. If you own your own uh, business, if you do marketing consulting, if you are a solopreneur, uh, an agency owner, or uh, just doing any type of online marketing, I think INFPs are very, very good at at becoming successful in that. Take, for example, if you have clients, you can really offer a lot to clients that no one else can. Like I think understanding what the client wants and being intuitive, having that intuitive perception of what the client is looking for is something that we can grasp really easily. You know, Um, I think that's why for a lot of my, basically all of my clients, you know, they they love the work that that I do, and I think it's because of the, of me understanding what they want and communicating what they they are they they are wanting, right? So if they ask something, you know, there's more to it, more to the question than than what than what it is uh, right in front of you. So it's just having that intuitive sense of giving them what they want. And also, you know, just going above and beyond, right? I think what I've learned while working at marketing agencies, you know, they hire an agency for SEO or what have you. And what I've learned was that, you know, they hire you to do the work, but they hire you for the insights that you bring, for your expertise in analyzing the data and interpreting the data to figure out the strategy moving forward. So when it comes to serving clients, um, it's always good to go above and beyond and not just do the bare minimum, but do a little bit more, go one step further in whatever it is you are doing. And I think that has really helped me provide the best I can, uh, the best service I can for my clients. So always just going above and beyond is something that comes natural to me because I want to make people happy and give people the value that my company brings. And also just um, another thing is focusing 
like I think we really focus on the positives and just move forward, you know, just keep moving forward and focusing on the positives. I remember, you know, back in 2016, I used to work at a company and I have just realized how much drama and negativity people bring into the workplace and just the the gossip and and all of that stuff, right? And a lot of people feed off of that. A lot of personality types feed off of that drama, off of that negativity, off of the problems. And, you know, I've noticed a lot of people, they just focus on, oh, they did this, the client doesn't know what they're talking about, or they don't know what to do. And I think for me, I've been very, very drama free. Like I just stick to business. I don't talk about you know what happened in my personal life or or what have or what have you you know it's always just business and i think people like that you know people just want to get the work done and move forward and i think with infps they can really just remove all of that drama and just do the work and if you just do the work you are above everyone else right and and I think for me, being a marketing consultant and running my own agency, my own consulting business has really been able to make me feel more comfortable, you know, working alone. Not everyone can work alone. Actually, most of the population, they can't work alone in a sense. You know, of course, me, like I work with tons of clients. I email, I, I'm on the phone. So I'm not necessarily working alone per se, but just in a working environment, a lot of people need that that interaction of people to people interaction, and I think INFPs don't they actually don't need that, right? So in this day and age when everyone is online, everyone is on the computer, uh, now more than ever people are not necessarily working face to face, so INFPs can really grow and right now is the best time for INFPs to really dive in and work alone and and be proud of working alone because really everyone is basically forced to work alone, right? Because of what's going on, people are forced to work alone and the majority of the population are stressed, they are sad, but INFPs are really thriving right now. So um, if you haven't really started your own business or worked alone, anyone could do it. And I think INFPs are the best personalities to to really work alone. You know, I've just over the past year, you know, doing this podcast over since October, so about seven or so months now, I haven't been able to do it without learning the how to do it with that, right? And just getting that mindset of of publishing and 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 you know doing everything that you need to do to be successful online whatever it is whatever it is right so with affiliate marketing or or client marketing uh, you need to to know what to do and and put yourself out there and I wouldn't be able to put myself out there if it wasn't because of just the people that I have followed along the way like, you know, Russell Brunson, uh, Jim Edwards. And I learned a lot from Russell Brunson in his One Funnel Away Challenge, just learning to publish, right? Because if I didn't learn from him to publish, I wouldn't be actually running this podcast. So um, just putting yourself out there in your own way, I think will pay dividends in more, more often than not. So I highly encourage you to take the One Funnel Away Challenge because it gives you that framework to build your own online business. And if you want to work alone in your own online business, this is the first first step you need to take. Um, If you want to learn more, go to thecalmmarketer.co forward slash OFA. That's thecalmmarketer.co forward slash OFA. And you can learn more about it. And I highly recommend you take this. It's a 30-day challenge. It's a lot of work. But at the end of it, you will learn so much and grow so much. And I think INFPs are the best 
types of people who can really grow and and learn the most and and take action from it. So hopefully you thought this was helpful. Um, I will speak to you on the next episode.